Bueno, comenzando entonces. Buen día a todo el mundo. Good morning everyone. I'm Sebastian. I came here to talk today about rapid application development with templates, HTMX, and stateless uh, small talk images. In this talk, I want to bring uh, this new cool way to work with small talk. I think it's, I, I feel it great. I feel it's interesting. And uh, I wanted to share how it, uh, how it is, how it came to be, uh, how it is used for uh, currently, at least in my, in my experience, and what's the potential. So let's explore this together. Uh, next, please. So a, a, a little of preamble on why, why doing such a thing or why exploring this line of thought and this uh, stack. Uh, in the same spirit, you can send uh, an unarmed soldier to a battle because that will be court martial. You should not send an engineer to the market without uh, proper equip equipment. So in 2023, what did that mean? Um, I like uh, a guy, I like very much a guy that uh, it, uh, his name is um, Marcos Lemonis. Uh, he's uh, an entrepreneur billionaire entrepreneur, but what I like about him is that he cares about businesses that are struggling and he kind of uh, envisions how to save them, how to make them survive and th even thrive, uh, e even in those hard circumstances. So he goes to the essentials and finds path from pathology to homeostasis, from, from what's wrong to, to what works. And one of the things that he brings up to is uh, that he goes to the essentials, people, product, and process, all the time. He talks about people, product, and process. So we, we need to work with great people, uh, select with great people, bring the best on people, find what's the, the, the best of the products that will work, and find the process that helps two things, to find this, uh, this product and to process to operate in, uh, this uh, in the market as a product. So we are engineers, as small talkers. Uh, so what's our part here? Where is kind of the three of them, but let's focus a little bit in this talk uh, on, on product and product discovery and how this stack that I'm bringing will help on that. Because if we remember, let's go to the next one. Thank you. The, if you remember, if you remember the, in 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 Dan Ingalls' uh, paper, one of the first first things that you see in small talk is that it was created in the spirit of helping the creative spirit in everyone. And we, as an as, as engineers, uh, what I want to bring here in this uh, specific uh, spirit and, and and optimization with this stack is three things: speed, flexibility, and cost. The in the speed is in the maintain in the speed of maintaining um, the development speed. In flexibility is in architecting a system that has adaptability in mind that avoids vendor locking when it's excessive. Uh, it can me uh, um, um, not have that dependency on the cloud that often uh, makes the costs uh, go to the roof. And, and gives you more flexibility in options on how to deploy and uh, the interoperability. So you have, a, in, in other words, when you put all these things together, you have flexibility. You can change your mind. This is important for the business and for, for discovering the right product that works well. So how, so how we can navigate this where, with, with our technology? The practical consequence of having this thing is to do it in a way that doesn't have a astronomical budget, you can keep costs uh, low. Uh, so you can do more experiments until you, you find it, uh, what's, what's working. So, but what's new really? So we, we, with Seaside, we already have a way to do web applications and, and develop. So, and, and, and Seaside already did uh, a, a way to work, uh, allow it our, our to work with uh, server-side uh, rendering, like since years now. But um, the world has developed, the engineering world has developed a lot of uh, stacks and variations and options 
and came with a lot of way to render the screen. Um, but now, after a lot of years, it came back to realize that, yeah, maybe server-side rendering was actually good uh, for many, many cases. And we have that, like, self-evident at this point with Next, Nuxt, SvelteKit, Quasar, Gatsby, among the most uh, well-known uh, stacks. So, but doing uh, single page applications, it can be messy or can be sometimes too much for some cases. Uh, you have to load a, a whole lot of, lo of libraries before your application even, even starts. So that could be that could be leaving you out of a lot of opportunity in terms of what kind of product are you going to deliver. If you, if you require too much, it might be a blocker for certain businesses. Let's go. Next. And there is another problem that some, some got too enthusiastic. Thank you, Esteban, for the meme. <laughs> uh, this is a meme that is a, is a, it's a, something that came to be well known because what you are see, what you're, we're seeing here is like the the unholy mix of of having a component that can react to a presentation layer action, like a click of a button, uh, but insert a, 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 a SQL uh, uh, command here from the front end. It's too much. It's too mixed. It's too mixed concern. Too 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 much. Um, too much in that mix. Too much. Uh, we are we are having the, again the the vulnerability of the of the early web. And the web is is complex. It has many many parts. Uh, database pipelines, uh, depending on each case, is scaling differently, even is scaling horizontally. But time uh, is limited. Uh, no one can learn all the skills. Sometimes you need someone that only takes care that this is even a structure that doesn't break. Uh, so that's that's meaning that if you want to try a startup, it will be like costly just to make that uh, pipeline work. Why it couldn't be easier or cheaper? Go to the next one. So you have to find some fi you have to find some balance uh, in the in the architecture. You have microservices from microservices to the monolith, and and in the middle, mini services. The the, the microservices architecture will be sometimes complex to debug if you have a, a intercoupling not properly made uh, or you have it's hard to follow where the problem happens um, and the monolith sometimes doesn't scale well so, so you have to see every every case can be a case uh, but in in maybe you can start the yeah, a startup with the monolith and then move move uh, to a later stage uh, scaling in, in, in mini services so you have to see that. So in all that, the motivation, as you can see now at this point, was how can we have something that uh, give us good economics to do good product discovery? And for that, uh, in teams, not only not only are composed of engineers. Sometimes we have product people or designers. So how we interoperate with them? How we cross cross functionally operate with them efficiently? Let's go to the next one. And as applicability, if uh, when I, when I was thinking of all these things, uh, I was thinking, okay, but what's the in what in which cases this could be a good fit? Uh, well, of course, growing the small talk ecosystem because if you have more startups that it starts efficiently, uh, the ecosystem will be more fertile. Uh, you you will have a a, a case for 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 having. Uh, the next startup uh, doing with a, a cheaper uh, MVP. Uh, all of the MVPs, the micro SaaS, the, the, the every 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 startup, right? Uh, consultancy service, or when it, st it scales, if you have a team, you can you can start thinking software factory and squads of players. Maybe you have like a guild of developers that are good interacting together because they know some the domain or they're. The, you have a developer that is also good with certain designer, so it's not necessarily only small talkers. Um, and the boot camps, maybe. Oh, if you have the right stack that is that it feels productive, maybe you are being 
inclusive with people that feels comfortable to work with that kind of stack. Think of that in in other communities outside outside our community. So th there are um, other frameworks that are uh, that are popular. That one of the reasons that what they grew so fast was because it was easy for instructors to guide new developers in the new generation to do the next uh, quick uh, app, and 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 they made it feel uh, empowered and and feel the power of building. Th that little thing for their own. So, let's talk now about how this that I'm that I experiment is structured. Um, what I did was see that HTMX was uh, prioritizing uh, using really HTML and using uh, everything uh, at, as much as, as it can in the backend. And being backend agnostic, you could put it, uh, whatever backend you want. Of course, in this case, uh, the experiment I try I try Smalltalk, and inside Smalltalk I use Model View Presenter. So there is a presentation layer, there is the model for the business logic, and uh, and the view layer uh, it's uh, mustache templates. So I'm using templates in a way that will be familiar for other um, uh, frameworks like like the ones that I was mentioning uh, before, uh, based on JavaScript or, or or even Ruby on Rails. And also, I included, uh, at least in, in my implementation, not in, not in the framework itself, I will, gather, I will gather input from the community for seeing if this should be part of not, uh, mapless models. Because mapless is this framework that I was uh, creating to make data uh, portable and agnostic from backends, so you can save a mapless in in in, in PostgreSQL, in Redis, in Gemstone. It would be interest. Uh, it would be uh, mm, what else? What else do we have? Uh, PNQL, uh, SQLite was the last one. So the the same mapless you just send save in the different repo and it's transparent and not it's doesn't need a schema. So if we are using if we are using this, um, maybe we are having an application that also have resiliency in, in what what's more convenient at the time uh, going to a, a, the cloud, going to your own hosted uh, group of servers, uh, migrating an application and making it uh, gain this ability with this. So beside that, we have models. We have how to save it. We have to how to cache. Because if we save it in Redis, we will be caching. Uh, we have um, a basic session. When you visit a, 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 the web application, you, you, you get a session and you get a root presenter. This root presenter will have uh, any local state for that presentation later, later when it was rendered. Uh, it will have re the routes uh, result from the, a directory structure that is uh, conventional for this. Uh, th there is a convention this framework is using, which is in templates, views. You have um, an index mustache that will be like the home. And from there, any sub uh, directory from views, it will be like routes. And you will have your own uh, sub uh, index mustache that will be the helps uh, templating that will render the, that uh, particular uh, presenter. We are we are going to see now one, an example. And actions. So so think on think of the presenter like this. It's it's an object that knows how to render in HTML and how to react to actions. So so from the user interface from the browser, the, you, you get a stimuli. You you get the, the clicks, uh, the inputs, the submits, and and the presenter can. Uh, receive these actions, do something, and speed the the render HTML. Next one, let's take a look at it. Let let's take a look at at this one like this um, in live. Uh, two fingers. Yeah, I mean something must. Now, but let's think something. So we are going to see one example 
uh, now that is the counter index uh, mustache and you will see there is an index uh, GS. This index GS is like any uh, JavaScript behavior you might uh, you might want to add to, to to the presenter. So in the right here, you see uh, you see the button, and the button has the HTMX uh, with a post to 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 the counter in this case, which is talking. And it's targeting where the HTML is going to that that is going to be the result of that action. What 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 is going to do with that? And and the headers are the headers you will see uh, are the actual uh, symbol that is going to match the selector that is performed in in, in the presenter. So you can decrement in this case uh, uh, the. The, you, can, you can zoom in and, uh, and go on to the next slide. <laughs> yeah. All right. So, okay, here, what we are seeing here is the browser in Faro, the category is presenters there. And we are seeing here the welcome presenter showing that is the, is the root uh, of, the, of the whole application. And what we are seeing here is the, the action of opening the counter. I'm going to demo this now, but I want to show you the code, how it looks. Because what's interesting here is that in the first render, you get only the template render and kind of that's it. But when you uh, perform the first action, which is this one, and then you want us, you want it to open the counter. What you have is that it lazily um, creates the the counter presenter. So the footprint, uh, the memory footprint, should not be affected in advance. It should be uh, lazily uh, growing as the load grows. This this could this will be end up being important for for load and servers and and and, and cloud costs. So thanks, one. This is an example of an application that uh, is a little startup that is uh, going to be launching. Uh, like it's 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 being tested that it's being it's, it's going to be launched uh, in the next weeks. Um, what we are seeing here is a, is an application that has a process to capture uh, you can you can submit your own photo and have this super cool effect that you cannot do with AI because it's uh, it's always consistent and you cannot do that with AI. so you will get this uh, on your own photos and the and the the key thing here was that the the snappiness of the of the of the application needed to be uh, super fast and the degree of detail of every step of the user interface needed to be a lot of uh, in control. So the the libraries and the and the all the details on how the libraries have to be loaded and how the every step needed to be uh, led to the next step. Um, needed to be with different uh, options of, of, of GS libraries. And the degree of flexibility, uh, it's, it's not... When you use other frameworks, you don't have that degree of, of flexibility. This is, this is why uh, this was kind of a, a use case for this, uh, for this kind uh, of application. Thank, thank you. Let me check uh, here uh, something I can show you live in code here is this one is this one working yeah okay thank you diego um all right first here we see in this um in this uh, 
in this playground we have uh, we have a helper to stop and reset the the service we have the a helper that installs the application because you have you you, you could have different applications in the in the framework installed and a restart command so let's let's restart this guy and let's uh, take a, a quick view here um, on the structure beside the faro image in the, uh, in the environment to develop the uh, application you have the app you have templates you have a db um, folder uh, by default i'm using as i as i was saying uh, sqlite in in, in mapless uh, I included the uh, Docker container so you can you can you can Dockerize the Faro image and, and make and put it to work there. Uh, and you have the in the templates you have here the views. The counter in this case is here. And take a look at this one at this detail. You have two templates here so in this counter. So what's going on? Index is the default that renders the whole uh, counter component, the whole, the whole uh, presenter. You have the two uh, commands that are going to increment and decrement, and you have the result here, which is only this little thing that is, uh, yeah, it's a template. So you have this re replace on, from the small tool side, uh, with the real value after the action. So let's see the let's see the here in code. Uh, let's search for the counter. Counter is here. Increment, decrement. So decrement is just the expected. Increment, same thing. When it initializes, the count is in zero. Just that. So okay. Local host. Here we go. So, okay. The first rendering is the render of the main. It's asking for, for an input. When I send this input in the welcome, uh, this is the model. Hold on. This is the presenter. Cool. Uh, when I send this input, um I receive I receive here welcome welcome prompt username which is the this prompt username partial here what I get is the post action saying set set user first name here so we have we, what we have here is just the usual form uh, submission so we have we have the set user first name and the user first name is a method here that will take from from the current request the the input and will i will render the the html so let's Let's show it with one spot in the. I think it's better to show it with or with the to do actually. Let me show you with the to do. The to do is cooler. Uh, okay, I'm going to send step so it knows. You have the counter. The counter it works. So let's go to the to do. The to do doesn't have any, uh, but if you add the first one. And you presenter, you have the halt here in this in the in the far side, and here it's it, it's the it's the model. So the model has is in, is in, is creating a new model and adding it to the collection. If I if I go with the play, you have the the rest of it. So let me remove the halt and add the second. I uh, the second and one thing that I wanted to show you is how little this thing goes on the on the network because this is beautiful. Um, we have it's a task here and we have yeah 2.7 case which is just the partial. If you see if you see the 
the content of it in every in every request you you get only the partial uh in a in a in a in the counter of c side this is about 2.7 uh, case in the in the in the counter of right here let's take a look it's two 217 bytes so it's really it's really it's really small so what I want to show next is how efficient this thing could be uh, could you go after this one um, in the presentation, you will you will be able to take a look at the numbers there. But in a, it's it's a rough test, uh, five minutes test, uh, rendering the counter, just the counter, nothing else, and you have there like uh, ten workers at uh, doing ten to ten uh, renders per second each one, and the and the memory grew about ten percent while doing that. So and, and as a comparison. In ride, uh, you saw how how little it was like to to render uh, in, in the counter, for example, and you have double the uh, the transactions per second per worker and the memory footprint. It's uh, it's not exactly the same, but it, it grew only uh, five uh, percent in in this um, in this test. Of course, it's a simple test just to have a great, uh, a rough idea. But uh, yeah, uh, this this came from the from the Rust uh, community. Actually, it's a great phrase that I wanted to bring to, to you. Uh, rela rela reliability is crucial because otherwise we are predating uh, innovation. We need to have um, a reliable way to produce applications and to keep it running. Otherwise, we don't have ex uh, experience, time, resources to do. Uh, what we were talking in, in, in the previous talk about the, the going out of the, of the comfort zone, of the safe zone, and experimenting with new things, and new things that are to be desirable by people, and this means successful products. So let's go. So how to do use these things stateless in mapless, in, 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 uh, sorry, in small talk? Uh, how, how can we keep it, keep it uh, an image stateless during load and the ideas for that is if we use the session as a mapless and the presenters as mapless, what we have is this little thing. Uh, we have, I actually have here a session, a session here that is uh, serialized as, as JSON. So th that was an old session that was serialized as a mapless, very simple, as, as JSON. When that happens, and when you move the, because it's easy to save them uh, in different backends, you can just choose Redis, for example, and you will have N um, small talk images, and you will have uh, serialized the, for the session from the cookie. In Redis, uh, you, it's going to bring the the by key the the session deserialized with the presenters that were in use for that guy. So it's very very uh, easy to to move it in that direction. Um, so it became tri trivially uh, trivially uh, implementable to keep it stateless. Okay. So the idea is uh, also explore, I, I already started this work, uh, connecting it with WebSockets, but WebSocket is kind of uh, in, in, the later, in the later stages of, of, the, of its life, life cycle, and there are new things coming, like Web Transfer, Quick, uh, HTTP3. So these things are, are kind of going to be familiar to to all of us uh, soon and we need to adapt to this uh, soon the having the the presenters uh, serializable they are are going to to help on that so okay what to take away yes not the probably it's okay but what else i think i brought i bring to you today uh, how we can uh, use the rich ecosystem that is already there 
by having templates uh, integrated, we are going to have a way to collaborate easily with the handouts of designers. So cross-functionality, it is going to be easier for uh, small talkers to, to get uh, integrated work with designers. We finally have ways to uh, leverage copy paste. There are plenty of examples of, of uh, HTML. For example, if you are using Tailwind, you can copy paste a, an example of Tailwind quickly and adapt it to your forms, and it will look great just from the start with very, very few uh, effort. Um, of course, we discussed SSR is back. We are. We I, I've shown here how HTMX is bringing a, a lead on this charge on 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 having a a very lean uh, front end, uh, but uh, all the rendering on the back end. If you compare, for example, if you want to do um, Ajax calls for 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 other frameworks, maybe if if you if you traditionally use jQuery, you have already like 70k load in the front end. Uh, when with HTMX you have 10, 10k, so it's 10k plus these little things of of render HTML, so it's extremely efficient. Think on think on poor connections on 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 3G and and, and, and stuff like that. And how uh, small talk is historically great for dominating complexity. So so it's good that we push this complexity to there because with that we can we can chew the the complexity and and and, and dominate it from the backend. Um, it's a way to reinvent the model view presenter pattern, which worked well for decades. No reason not to. Uh, yeah, that's the sweet spot for product discovery, small talk and HTMX. I salute you guys for being here. Thank you for for the time, for the attention. I encourage you to take a look at the at the work there because there is a lot of potential there. Thank you.